Welcome back to TC Talk Sports. You know what it is. All sports, all the time. NFL Week 4 just wrapped up with some crazy Monday night football games. If you missed any of the action from last night on Sunday or Thursday, you've come to the right spot. Here is your NFL Week 4 recap. Week 4 started off with an NFC East matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. Giants not scoring a touchdown in this game. It was a big game Coming into this for both teams, really, Cowboys struggling and the Giants obviously struggling because they stink. Dak Prescott in this one, 22 for 27, 221 yards and one touchdown. C.D. Lamb, after his frustrations in Week 3, showed up in Week 4. Seven catches for 98 yards and that first half touchdown. 94 of those 98 receiving yards came in the first half, but he wasn't really needed in the second half for Dallas. On the Giants side, not a bad game for Daniel Jones. Finished with 281 passing yards. Did have an interception. He went the last two games without throwing a pick, but I think he has solidified his number one receiver in Malik Neighbors. 12 catches, 115 receiving yards. He did get injured on the second to last drive of the game with a head injury. A great game for the rookie. And Wondell Robinson, a guy that I said could be competing for that number one receiver spot. I think it officially goes the neighbors after this Thursday night game, but Wondell Robinson, 11 catches for 71 yards total in this one. Bad news for the Cowboys. Veteran Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons both left the game with injuries. Again, no real reports about how bad those injuries are, but if they miss any time going forward, that could be a problem for the struggling Cowboys defense. Thursday night football, Cowboys come away with a 20-15 to win. They go to 2-2, two and two, Giants drop to 1-3. and three. The Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets. I feel bad for anybody at this game or a fan of either of these teams and watching the whole thing. Probably the worst, most boring game of the week. Bo Nix went 12-25, for 25, 60, yes, 6-0 passing yards. Did have a passing touchdown, and it went to Cortland Sutton, who had three receptions. For 60 yards. Yes, he had all of Bo Nix's passing yards. Other guys caught passes, but they had negative receiving yards. So it looks as Cortland Sutton caught every single yard thrown by Bo Nix. Defense for Denver showed up big versus the Jets. Five sacks. They've been on a roll the last two games on that defensive line, racking up sacks for their defense. On the Jets side, former MVP Super Bowl Winner Aaron Rodgers struggled against this Denver defense. He went 24 for 42, 225 total passing yards. Mike Will, Mike Dub, Mike Williams, his best game as a Jet. Four catches for 67 yards for the big man. Brees Hall, a lot of people expected him to have a big game. He started out the year on fire. Ten carries for four yards. You can count the amount of yards he had on one hand. Four rushing yards for Brees Hall. And Greg Zerloin missed the game-winning 50-yard field goal as time expired. The Broncos get the 10-9 win over the Jets. Both teams now settle in at 2-2. Two and two. Minnesota Vikings versus the Green Bay Packers. This one in Lambeau Field. First game back at Lambeau for running back Aaron Jones. And what a day he had. 22 carries, 4 receptions for 139 total yards. Didn't score a touchdown. Touchdown betters were upset about that, like myself. But a huge game for Aaron Jones. Justin Jefferson, six catches for 85 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Addison also added a touchdown for Minnesota. But how about Sam Darnold? Last week I said I wasn't... I have to pump the brakes on the MVP talks for him. But through four weeks, he has looked incredible. And this one versus the Packers, 20 for 28, 275 yards, three passing touchdowns. Did have an interception, but it didn't really come to much for the Packers, but a beautiful game from Sam Darnold. Jordan Love injured the last two games. He got the start in this one. Struggled at the beginning, but a crazy stat line for him. 32 for 54, 389 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, but did throw three interceptions. Jordan Love is now 0-2 on the year for the Packers. Malik Willis as a starter is 2-0, so make what you want of that, but A huge game for the Vikings. Jordan Reed, that Jaden Reed, excuse me, Jordan Reed, the former Washington Commanders, then Redskins tight end. 
Jaden Reed, seven catches, 139 yards, and one touchdown. And how about Dontavian Wicks, five catches, 78 yards, and two touchdowns. This is a fun offense to watch, but if they can't win games, then it's not going to matter. But they have a lot of dangerous weapons on that offensive side. They were able to put up 29 total points versus the Vikings in this one. But it was 28-7 to at halftime. As I said, Love struggled in that first half. And then Green Bay outscored Minnesota 22-3 to in the fourth quarter. But because of that poor first half performance, the Vikings extend to 4-0, 31-29 over the Green Bay Packers. Saints versus the Falcons NFC South matchup. I was pretty excited for this one to see. Saints obviously started off the year so hot. A rough week three. I was going to see what how they would come out in this week four matchup. Kirk Cousins in this one, 238 passing yards, didn't throw a touchdown, and had an interception. Drake London, again, emerging as that number one receiver. Six catches for 64 yards, but it was all about the Atlanta defense in this one. Two fumble recoveries, one resulted in a touchdown, and a pick six for the Falcons' defense. On the Saints' side, the offense kind of fluttered a little bit. Derek Carr, 239 passing yards, no passing touchdowns, and that pick six. Alvin Kamara did have 19 carries and seven receptions for 119 total yards, so he found the 100-plus yard section once again. Chris Olave and Rahid Shahid. Shahid last week, zero catches for zero yards. He showed up in this divisional matchup. Both of those guys, eight catches for 80-plus receiving yards, so good days for both of them. And how about Taysom Hill? Six carries, 24 yards. His first touchdown of the year, and then he added a second one later on in the game. Two touchdowns for the versatile Taysom Hill. Close game, and none other than Young Wei Ku. 58 yards, the game winning field goal for Atlanta. It wins 26 to 24. Both teams now 2 and 2 in the NFC South. Eagles and Buccaneers, this was another game I was excited for. Eagles taking down the Saints last week, but not a great game for them. Coming into this one without wide receivers, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Jalen Hurts went 18 for 30, passing the ball for 158 passing yards, one touchdown, and he added eight carries, 20 yards, and a rushing touchdown. Dallas Goddard, the number one receiver in this game, seven catches for 62 yards. Saquon Barkley, I thought he would have a big game in this one. Ten carries, only ten carries, which... For the Eagles and Nick Sirianni, that's a problem. There's rumors floating around, or maybe just talks, that Sirianni could be fired by the end of the year. Only 10 carries for Saquon Barkley is crazy. He's probably been the best offensive player in the league so far. 84 rushing yards, so he made the most out of that, but he definitely needs more touches, especially without wide receiver 1 and 2 not even being in the lineup. But then we go to the Tampa Bay side. There was a lot of haters on Baker Mayfield after the last two weeks because of his, he had such a great start in week one. I was not one of those people, I believe, in Baker Mayfield. He is a dog, and he responded in this game. 347 yards, two touchdowns, and a rushing touchdown. That's now back-to-back weeks with a rushing touchdown for Mayfield. And he didn't throw an interception, which is, has been the problem for him in the past. Clean game for Baker. I guess Bucky Irving, the rookie out of Oregon, is the starting running back now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 10 carries for 49 yards. White also had 49 yards, but Bucky getting most of the workload the last two weeks for the Buccaneers. On the receiving side, best game of the season for Mike Evans. Season high in receptions with 8 and 94 receiving yards. And he scored a touchdown for Tampa Bay. And Chris Godwin, another solid game. Six catches for 69 yards. Nice. Baker Mayfield was able to spread the ball around the field. The defense looked good. Six sacks against the Eagles, who have a good offensive line, but Buccaneers defense showing up in this one. Baker showing up in this one. Tampa Bay wins 33-16. to Buccaneers now 3-1, and Eagles 2-2. Two and two. Cincinnati Bengals and the Carolina Panthers, a homecoming for the Red Rifle Andy Dalton coming off a win versus the Raiders last week. Started off a little bit scary for Cincinnati. Burrow did finish the game 22 for 31, 232 passing yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Chase Brown, his best game of the season, 15 carries, 80 yards for two touchdowns. And Jamar Chase, only three catches in this one, but had 85 yards and that long touchdown from Burrow pretty early on in the game. 
But Carolina, this offense has found something. This offense has clicked with the veteran Andy Dalton at quarterback, which is not a surprise because Bryce Young is terrible. Dalton, 25 for 40, only 220 yards, did have two passing touchdowns and an interception. Chuba Hubbard, 18 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown. That's now back-to-back games with 100-plus rushing yards for him. He is a talented running back, and now we're starting to see that in this new-look offense for Carolina. And Deontay Johnson, the offseason pickup for Carolina, seven catches, 83 yards, and a touchdown. That's back-to-back 80-plus yard games for him and touchdowns. Two straight games with a touchdown for Johnson and Xavier Leggett, the rookie from South Carolina. His best game of his young career, six catches, 66 yards, and his first career touchdown. Capped it off with a riding of the horse <laughs> celebration. That guy's been a character all offseason. Now he's starting the, we're starting to see his talent with Andy Dalton being his quarterback. The Jacksonville Jaguars and the Houston Texans, if you've been following along on this YouTube page or my TikTok, TC Talk Sports, go give that a follow. You know I am one of the biggest Trevor Lawrence haters, and finally the world is getting to see how bad of a quarterback he is. In this one, 18 for 33, 169 yards, two touchdowns. Didn't throw an interception, but still not a great game from him. Brian who I've been contemplating if he is or can be the number one receiver for Jacksonville. Another good game for him. Six catches, 86 yards, and another touchdown for the rookie out of LSU. But Christian Kirk, who should be that number one receiver, he showed up in this game. Seven catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown for him. That backfield's been a little bit iffy the last couple weeks. Tank Bigsby, seven carries for 90 yards. That led all rushers for the Jaguars. Travis Etienne, only 11 carries, had one reception, only 60 total yards for him. He's got to be that number one offensive weapon for Jacksonville if it wants some sort of success or win, really, the rest of the season. But not a great day from him. Houston Texans, this game was looking scary for them on possible upset alert all game long. But C.J. Stroud coming through for the Texans, 345 passing yards Two touchdowns for him. Stephon Diggs, they found a little bit of chemistry, a good relationship in Houston for them. Five catches, some nice yardage for him, finished with 69. And he had a rushing touchdown, a little bit of a different play for him, but ended up working out. The creativity in Houston is working well because they have a lot of weapons to utilize. But Nico Collins, if you haven't heard his name yet, then you don't have any social media or pay attention to football at all. 12 catches, 151 yards, and another touchdown for Nico. He leads the league with 489 total receiving yards. He's been on a tear to start the season for Houston. He has three games with 100-plus receiving yards, obviously helping him out to be at the top of the league. Texans were losing in this game until 18 seconds left in regulation. C.J. Stroud throwing a passing touchdown. Texans win this one 24-20. Now with a 3-1 record in the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence. Zero wins, four losses to start the season. Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts this game in Indy. Steelers fans were kind of wary about this game. It's that type of game where they come off a big win versus the Chargers and then they might flutter a little bit. And they definitely fluttered to start the game. Colts set the tone with an eight-play, 70-yard, three-minute first possession for them, capped off with a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Second drive of the game, Anthony Richardson got hurt, came back in, and then got hurt again. But the Lord and Savior, Joe Flacco, came in for the Colts on that second drive through a four-yard touchdown pass to Josh Downs, who had a hell of a game himself, eight catches, 82 yards, And that touchdown, that was his first of the season. Jonathan Taylor finished this one, 21 carries, 88 yards, and that touchdown on the first drive. Michael Pittman, a season-best game for him, six catches, 113 yards. I've been giving him crap in every recap because I bet on his future receiving yards over, and then some I need 1,250. But I believe with Joe Flacco, it's still possible to reach that mark. Uh, There's no word on Anthony Richardson on how long he could be out, but Flacco looked good 
for the Colts, so I don't see why you go away from that. And on third down, the Colts were 8 for 15. The Steelers' defense, they just couldn't get a stop, especially late in the game when it was a two- or even one-possession game. And Colts just down the field, picking up first downs to extend drives and ultimately win this game. But Justin Fields, a hell of a game for Fields. And if anybody thinks the blame from this game goes on Fields, then they are absolutely nuts. If Russell Wilson is healthy and ready to go, you still got to start Justin Fields. In this one, he went 22 for 34, 312 passing yards. That's the second most in his career. Had a touchdown, didn't throw an interception, but he did fumble. He was under some pressure in this game. Another starting offensive lineman injured and out for the season for the Steelers as well. Fields also adding 10 carries, 55 rushing yards, and two rushing touchdowns. That's three rushing touchdowns in the last two games. George Pickens, his season high in receiving yards, seven catches for 113 yards against that Colts secondary. But the Colts defense coming up big in this one, four sacks. Two fumble recoveries, and they were able to, they gave up a lot of yards, but were able to hold the Steelers in this one, giving them their first loss of the season. Colts win 27 to 24. Los Angeles Rams versus the Chicago Bears. This one at Soldier Field in Chicago. Rams still dealing with all those injuries. The Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, the two biggest ones. Cup, they said, out till. Week six, Puka could be out until week eight or maybe even a little longer. But Stafford trying to do what he can with this makeshift offense, basically. He went 20 for 29, 224 yards, did throw a pick, and did fumble the ball. Tutu Atwell, the leading receiver in this one for the Rams, four catches, 82 yards. Jordan Whittington got involved for the Rams. But, of course, it was Kyron Williams, 19 carries, 94 yards, and one touchdown. He scored a touchdown in four straight games, every game to open the 2024 season. Kyron has found the end zone, which is nothing new, nothing surprising for football fans. On the Chicago Bears side, Caleb Williams, safe game for him. 17 for 23, 157 passing yards and a touchdown. Didn't throw an interception, which he's had some problems with to start the season, but a good game for him to propel his team to a win. But how about this? You remember DeAndre Swift? (laughs) The very good running back for the Lions had a decent year with the Eagles. He has had a terrible year for the Bears. The offensive line is horrible, but it looked better in this game. DeAndre Swift, 16 carries, 7 receptions, 165 total yards, and a touchdown for the washed-up DeAndre Swift. Roshan Johnson did find the end zone for Chicago as well. I'm not sold on this performance from Swift. I need to see multiple weeks of good games. I mean, this was a great, amazing game for him, and I don't think he'll have another game like this for the rest of the season. But if he has good games, then maybe I can buy back into that. But the Bears improving the 2-2 two and two with a 24-18 to win over the Rams. Rams drop to 1-3. and three. God damn it. Chargers versus the Chiefs. Everyone knew this one would be close going into it. Chargers coming off a rough loss to the Steelers last week and a lot of injuries, a suspension. In this game, the Chargers didn't have Joe Alt, Rashawn Slater, or Joey Bosa. Derwin James got suspended for this game from a hit versus the Steelers last week. I mean, whatever. But beginning of the game, fabulous for the Chargers. Chargers were up 10-0 seven minutes into this game at home. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better start. Carson Steele got the start for the Chiefs in the backfield. He fumbled on the first drive. And then Mahomes on the Chiefs' second drive, an interception to Christian Fulton. And then, of course, everyone knows that injury to Rasheed Rice. Mahomes throwing the pick and then possibly ending Rasheed Rice's season. Rumors have it it could be a torn ACL, and that would be a huge loss for the Chiefs going forward, especially because their offense hasn't looked that great or Chiefs-like so far through four weeks. Mahomes, 19 for 29, 245 yards, and a passing touchdown. Kelsey, of course, against the Chargers, he had his season best, seven catches for 89 yards. Now, Mahomes didn't have his number one receiver, so of course, Kelsey was going to step up in this one. No Derwin James, who usually man marks Travis Kelsey out for this one. He was running free. 
best game of the season for him. Drew Tranquil on the defensive side, former Chargers, of course. His season high of tackles with 10, also leading the team in this one, just of course. I mean, he was a good player in, in L.A. with the Chargers, but nothing special. But of course, he showed up in this game. And how about former retired, former Chiefs running back Kareem Hunt? He comes in and gets most of the, the work after Carson Steele's fumble. 14 carries for 69 yards. His first game of the year. And he had 14 carries for 69 yards. I mean, the Chargers just couldn't stop the run. And the Chiefs were 9 for 16 on third down. I mean, well over 50%. Probably one of the best throughout week four, I guarantee it. Because that's just the, the way it goes for the Chargers. Can't stop the run. Can't get stops on third down. You just keep the ball in Mahomes' hand. And that's not a good idea. Chiefs 5.7 yards per play. That was their second highest so far this season. They had 6.1 versus the Ravens in week one. But you're giving up those type of numbers as a Chargers defense, and you it's going to be a tough game to win. Despite all the injuries, Chargers kept it close. Herbert 16 for 27, 179 yards, and a touchdown. The offensive line was in shambles, of course, without their two starting tackles. Herbert, once again, under a bunch of pressure, basically playing off of one leg, and he made an amazing play to escape the pocket and thread a needle where he literally had this much space to throw the ball to J.K. Dobbins on the sideline in the fourth quarter. He dropped it, kills the drive. I think that would have changed the game tremendously for the Chargers. Also, the tight end screen to Hayden Hurst. Not the best throw. I don't know if he could have caught it, but if he did, Tony Romo said there was 50 yards of free space in front of him to run. That also would have changed the game, but didn't happen. Lad McConkey, he was impressive in this game. Five catches for 67 yards and scored that first touchdown of the game. Great catch in the back of the end zone. And a beautiful throw from Herbert that no one talks about, but basically slung it behind the defender's back in the place only McConkey could catch it. He did. It was a hard-fought battle for the Chargers, but they lose this one 17-10. Chiefs now 4-0. Chargers, along with the rest of the AFC West, go to 2-2. Two two. Commanders versus the Arizona Cardinals. Holy shit. Jaden Daniels is good. He is fast. He is accurate. He's explosive. Not enough adjectives to describe what this rookie is doing. 26 for 30 in this game. That is an 86% completion percentage. He's now up to 82% on the year, and that is unheard of. That is <laughs> insane for Jaden Daniels. I said last week I was a little iffy on the rookie of the year, but there's no way he doesn't win it. Jaden Daniels, rookie of the year. Congratulations, kid. Just stay healthy. Brian Robinson also got it done on the ground. 21 carries, 101 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown. Alamedi Zacchaeus, the leading receiver for... The Washington Commanders, six catches for 86 yards. Did you know he was on the Commanders? No, because I did not either. Terry McLaurin, now back-to-back -back good games for him. Seven catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Two straight games with a touchdown for Scary Terry. Commanders were 9 for 12 on third down. So I take back what I said about the Chiefs probably being the best this week. It was definitely the Washington Commanders. That's a 75%, right? Yeah, 75% success rate on third down for the Commanders. I know a lot of people fell in love with the Cardinals after they demolished the Rams in Week 2, I think it was. I was not one of those people. If you've been following along on YouTube or the TikTok, TC Talk Sports, go give that a follow. I've been probably the biggest Arizona Cardinals hater so far this season. They just got wiped out by the Commanders in Week 4. Kyler, 16 for 22, only 142 passing yards. Did find Marvin Harrison... For another touchdown, Marv, five catches, only 45 yards, nothing impressive there. James Conner, the work workhorse in this game, 18 carries, 104 yards, and another rushing touchdown for him. James Conner just doing James Conner thing. But the Commanders, they were up big. They outscored the Cardinals 25-7 to in the second half, leading them to the giant win of 42-14. to Commanders now 3-1. and Cardinals dropping to 1-3, and three, that only win coming against the Rams. New England Patriots versus the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, the Patriots just suck. Jacoby Brissett did have a better game than last week where he couldn't even throw for 100 yards. 
This week, he went 19 for 32, 168 passing yards, did throw for a touchdown and did throw a pick. Ended up being a pick six to Fred Warner. Defense looked great for the 49ers, six sacks and that pick six. Antonio Gibson, the backup running back, leading. Antonio Gibson, the backup running back, the leading receiver for the Patriots in this one. Three catches for 67 yards. Did you guess who the Patriots' touchdown went to? Correct. It was Austin Hooper. He finished with two catches, 13 yards. San Francisco, Brock Purdy got some of his weapons back. George Kittle and Debo Samuel back in the lineup. Christian McCaffrey, who knows what's going on with him. He might need both of his legs decapitated or something. I don't know what's... Nobody knows what's going on with him. But Purdy, 15 for 27, 288 passing yards, a touchdown, and a pick, which he doesn't do very often, but gave up one. In this game, Jordan Mason, 24 carries for 123 yards and a rushing touchdown. That is now 91 carries this year. That leads the entire National Football League. Excuse me, there's a fly flying around. Absolute workhorse Mason is without McCaffrey. In the lineup, Juwan Jennings, a huge game last week. Three touchdowns over 100 yards. This game, he had three catches for 88 yards, George Kittle, four catches, 45 yards, and a touchdown in the game back from the injury. 49ers just dominated. No other way to put it. They win 30-13. to They're now 2-2. Two and two, Patriots 1-3. and three. Cleveland Browns and the Las Vegas Raiders. Browns just have to close up the season and look forward to next year because they are terrible. Raiders coming into this one without Max Crosby or number one receiver Devontae Adams. Gardner Minshew went 14 for 24. 130 yards, a very quiet game for him. No touchdowns, no picks. Zamir White still is, I mean, they're just trying to get him in his groove, and it's just not working out in Vegas. 17 carries for 50 yards and a fumble for White. Raiders touchdowns coming from Trey Tucker and DJ Turner, each having a rushing touchdown in this one, but the defense stood strong. Sean Watson, who I said in the last video should just retire, and I can copy and paste that statement because he's... He's nothing. 176 yards, one touchdown, and an interception, of course. Jerome Ford, the last couple weeks, everyone's been iffy about him, but he dominated the touches over Deontay Foreman again in this one. 10 carries, 7 receptions for 85 total yards. A decent bounce-back game for him, but, I mean, that Brown's offense, defense, organization, coaching staff is just a disaster, and it always has been. Amari Cooper, 4 catches for 35 yards. He did have an 82-yard touchdown that got called back from an offensive lineman holding. They were down 2016 in the fourth quarter with about like 10 minutes left. Still early on, but that was just a huge momentum crusher for the Browns. They weren't able to score after that. The Raiders go on to win 20-16, to now tied for second in the AFC West. Broncos and Chargers also 2-2. Two and two. Browns 1-3, and three, now last in the AFC North. Of course, they're terrible. Bills Ravens, holy shit, what a game this was Sunday night. A good treat for football fans to end Sunday. If you missed the beginning of the game, you missed an incredible play from Derrick Henry. First play of the Ravens' first possession, they got the ball second. Derrick Henry, handoff, 87 yards to the house. That dude is huge. He's a monster, and he is fast as hell. I don't know how that body can move that fast, but he's just a freak. 87-yard touchdown for him, and he didn't stop there. He finished with 24 carries, 199 yards, and two touchdowns. He had a catch, a receiving touchdown, which we don't see that very often. And then he did have another handoff up the middle. He fumbled into the end zone. Pat Ricard was able to jump on it for Baltimore. So he was credited with that touchdown. Henry, very close to three total touchdowns for him. And Lamar Jackson, 13 for 18, 156 yards, two passing touchdowns, six carries, 54 yards for him. Running the ball, this team was unstoppable in this game. And Justice Hill, we led the team with six, six receptions. 78 yards and a touchdown. He got some handoffs as well. You put him, Lamar, and Derrick Henry in the backfield all together, you don't know where the hell the ball is going, and that's exactly what Baltimore did in this game. On the Bills' side, the offense was nowhere near as explosive and dangerous as it has been through the first three weeks. Josh Allen, only 16 for 29, 180 yards. 
didn't have a touchdown, didn't throw a pick, but did fumble on that stupid trick play that they tried to run on their own side of the field, and he got demolished. I'm surprised he didn't get hurt, but that's where his fumble came from. James Cook, similar to Saquon Barkley, only 10 touches in this game. He finished with 48 total yards. Bills did not look good, and the Ravens looked like they can win the Super Bowl again. Ravens go to 2-2 two and two with a 35-10 to 10 win over the Bills. Bills 3-1. and one. Darnold and Allen, I think, are 1A and 1B for MVP still even after this game. I mean, you're allowed to have a bad game, and I think Allen will bounce back the rest of the season, but a brutal loss for the Bills in Week 4. Titans and Dolphins, Monday Night Football. What a shit show this game was. Tyler Huntley started the game for the Dolphins. I thought he would have a decent game. I took his passing plus rushing overs and laddered his rushing yards. The straight did hit over 31 and a half rushing yards. He finished with 40 and a rushing touchdown. Passing, he went 14 for 22, 96 total yards, and he did have one fumble. Devon A. Chain, another quiet game for him. 10 carries, three receptions for 29 yards. Tyreek Hill, you remember him? Probably the best wide receiver in the league. He had four receptions, three carries. He almost had more carries than receptions. They were just trying to get him involved, and that still didn't work. 42 total yards for Tyreek. That's now back-to-back stinkers for him. Jalen Waddle led the team with like 40 receiving yards on four catches. Titans side, weird game for them. Will Levis starting. Of course, he threw an interception on the first drive, and he literally walked off the field and said, I didn't see the guy. He was right in front of the receiver. So another boneheaded play from him. Then Levis got hurt on the second possession of the game. Of course, by now, everyone has seen the picture. There you go. There it is. Uh, Just continues to be a meme through the first four weeks of the NFL season. Backup Mason Rudolph finished the game for him, going 9 for 17, 85 passing yards. Tony Pollard, of course, getting most of the work here. 22 carries, two receptions, 108 total yards for him. Tajay Spears also got more involved in this one for Tennessee. 15 total carries, only 39 rushing yards, but they did use him in a wildcat formation that he scored a touchdown on later on in the game. So pretty good game for Spears and Pollard really together coming into the season. I figured that would be a good running back duo. Titans win this one 31 to 12. Dolphins were outscored 22 to 9 in the second half. Titans first win of the year. Dolphins go to 1 and 3. Their season similar to the Browns is over. Speaking of running back duos, the best duo in the league Closing out week four on Monday night, Seahawks versus the Lions. I'm not talking about Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. It's Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. The Lions at home coming out in their new all-black uniforms with the blue helmets. These are sick, disgusting, awesome, whatever you want to call them. There's no way they weren't going to put on a show and win this game. Jared Goff set a record in this one. He went 18 for 18. First quarterback to complete all of his passes since Kurt Warner in 2005. Warner went 10 for 10, so that barely even counts. Goff, 18 for 18, 292 yards, two passing touchdowns, and a receiving touchdown on, there's no official name of it, but people are calling it the Detroit Special, Amon Ross St. Brown, passing touchdown to Goff. St. Brown, not a big game in this one. Started and ended with the backfield, Jameer Gibbs, getting more carries in this one. It seems a flip-flop every week or it's close every week, which is hilarious. But Gibbs, 14 carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns for him. David Montgomery, 12 carries, 40 yards, also added a 40-yard reception and scored a touchdown. And speaking of reception, Jamison Williams, two catches, 80 yards. He scored a 70-yard touchdown late in the game. He started high-stepping at the 25-yard line. That guy is fast. One of the best deep ball threats in all of the league. I've said it since the week one video. St. Brown, again, not a big game for him. A couple underneath catches, short gains, but that offense is the most dangerous offense in the league. Might not be the best offense in the league, but the most dangerous. Coming out on TikTok with my week four overreactions and not overreactions, not an overreaction. I'm putting Lions are the most dangerous offense in the league. I just want people to argue with me because that's, it's true. I mean, they're, crazy they got five or six guys that can kill you out there on the field Geno Smith balled out for the Seahawks though 38 for 56 he threw 56 passes 
Almost 400 yards. He finished with 395, had a touchdown and a pick. DK Metcalf, seven catches for 104 yards. Could have had a touchdown, but he was tackled down at the one-yard line, and that was finished off by none other than Kenneth Walker the third. K-9, 12 carries, four receptions, 116 total yards, and three total touchdowns for Walker. He missed the last two games with injuries. Didn't look like it in this one. Geno Smith also just spreading the ball around the field. Ten different players with a reception. This one, including A.J. Barner. Haven't heard of him. Me neither. He's a rookie from Michigan. He had two catches, and he caught that lone touchdown pass from Geno Smith. A great Monday night football game. Lions defense held strong against Geno Smith. Three sacks, a pick, and a fumble recovery by Carlton Davis. Lions look good. Lions look scary. It was at home. A lot of energy in that building, maybe because of the uniforms, but the offense looked phenomenal. Jared Goff, a perfect night. Lions win this one 42 to 29. Lions now 3 and 1. Seahawks also 3 and 1. There you have it, folks. Your NFL Week 4 recap. A couple upsets, a couple blowout wins. If you missed any of the action all year and you want to get caught up, you stay on this YouTube page. I got recaps from Week 3, 2, and 1. If you're more into the short form type of content, you go to the TC Talk Sports TikTok page. It's now the third time I've mentioned it, so you got to go follow that. Comment on there. Try to start an argument. Agree, disagree, do whatever you want. I'll always respond to your comments. There's some good stuff on there, so you're definitely going to want to follow that. Simple. TC Talks Sports TikTok. Give it a follow. That's plug number four. NFL has been crazy. I'm sure most Survivor Leagues are crushed up to this point with the amount of upsets. Team of the week, it's the Washington Commanders. Player of the week is Jaden Daniels. He will win Rookie of the Year. This kid is sensational. He looks, runs, throws like Lamar Jackson. He won an MVP. I can see an MVP in his future. Just got to stay healthy, Jaden. And if you haven't seen this guy, you got to go watch him play. If you haven't seen this YouTube page, you got to stay here and rewatch the NFL Weekly Recaps. Got some good shorts up here as well. And hey, do you know about the TC Talk Sports TikTok page? Plug number five. Go give that a follow, TC Talk Sports. This has been TC Talk Sports on YouTube. All sports, all the time. You know what it is. This was your NFL Week 4 recap. Come back next week for Week 5.